Hi everyone, Andy Trice here, and today I want to show you how I work with time-lapse photography with Creative Cloud. So time-lapse photography is um, images that are captured over a time interval for a long period of time, and then you can play them back in a video at a much higher speed than when they were actually captured. And so it really exaggerates subtle movement and like shows a, a clear passage of time. It can make some really, really interesting like video clips and, and segments. And um, the, the basics of it are that you set up your camera with, you know, on a tripod or something where it's not going to move. Uh, you set your camera to take pictures on an interval. So a lot of cameras have this already built in, um, even, you know, point and shoots, uh, little action cameras like GoPros have it built in. Um, High-end DSLRs have this built in, so it's something that's built into a lot of cameras. But basically, put it on a tripod, set your interval, and you know you could take a picture every couple of seconds, every couple of minutes. It really depends on how many pictures you want to end up with as a result, and also how long are you going to be doing your time lapse for? Are you going to do it for you know an hour total? Or are you going to be doing it for 20 hours? Or are you going to be doing it for I don't know even longer than that? Um, what I'm about to show you, I captured with a GoPro camera. Uh, set on a 10 second interval that was um, taking pictures for about two hours. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you can work with time-lapse photography with Creative Cloud. Now I'm in Lightroom and I want to start preparing my images for the video composition. And you can see here that I was capturing a sunset, so parts of it are really dark, parts of it are really bright, and what I want to do is, is balance that out to bring out more detail. So um, I found this with the GoPro images. It's sometimes really handy to pull up the shadows and pull down the highlights to bring out more details in the image. You can see more definition in the clouds. You can see more of the parking lot. You can see more of the buildings. Notice here I'm in the, the, the develop tab, uh, the develop module within Lightroom. Now I can also enhance this a little bit more. If I'm shooting landscapes, I often like to push up the clarity. Um, sometimes if you push it too far, it gets to be a bit too much, um, but this does sharpening and, and essentially contrast. So I like to pull up the clarity, pull up the vibrance, and also pull up the saturation. But you notice sometimes yellows get a little bit too intense. So I'm going to pull down the saturation on yellows. And I think that looks pretty good. We can look at the next picture in the sequence to compare what it looked like before and what it looks like now. I like where this is going, but I also want to flatten this out. So the GoPro has an ultra wide angle, 170 degree uh, wide angle field of view. And I want to apply some lens profile correction to flatten that out. Scroll down to the lens correction panel within Lightroom and select enable profile corrections. And Lightroom will automatically select my GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition lens profile based on metadata within the image. But I don't want this to be perfectly straightened out. I still want a little bit of distortion, but I don't want you know, the extreme distortion. I just want to flatten it out some. So I can use the distortion slider to adjust this kind of where I want it to be. Next, I want to straighten out the image. So I'll open the crop tool, and you can select on the little ruler icon next to where it says angle. And all that you have to do is draw a line across the image where you want it to be level, and it will automatically level the image based on that. So we've now got... Pretty level horizon. I could adjust it a little bit more if I want to. Let's, let's adjust it just a hair more. So we've got a level horizon. We've got the image flattened out. We've got the colors enhanced. Um, if I wanted to crop this a little bit more, I can, but I'm not going to because I want to leave it for the video composition, which we're going to crop it in there. Now I want to apply these settings to all the images in my collection from my um, time-lapse sequence. So you can see if I look at other images in the sequence, they don't have those settings applied. So I'll go back and select the image that we were just editing. And then I want to hit Command A to select all images that are in my current collection. You'll notice here I have 713 photos in this collection. And then I'm go you can either sync by hitting the sync button here on the, on the bottom right, or you can go to settings and sync settings. And this is going to pull up the synchronize settings dialog where you can synchronize whatever changes you've made to the metadata of this image across all the images that you have selected. So I'm going to make sure everything is selected and just hit the synchronize button. And now those changes are going to be applied to every image in the sequence. So you'll notice that when I select different images in the sequence, we can see that those settings have in fact been applied. And if I scroll through, you can see that 
when I jump ahead, that those settings have been applied. And I can jump all the way to the end where we can see that it's dark. Once we have these images configured the way that we want, we just need to export them. So you can go select all of them, go to File, Export, go through the Export dialog and export them um, to your file system. And I'm doing this as full resolution JPEG images, 100% um, quality. And so it's going to write all of them out to the file system. And now we can start creating a video. So let's jump over to Premiere. Now we're in Premiere and we want to start creating our time lapse video sequence. So the first thing I need to do is import the images I just exported from Lightroom. So I'm going to import, go to images. Um, I'm going to select the first image in my sequence, which is here. Okay, let me scroll down. You can see that I have uh, images named time lapse one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. Uh, these images need to be sequential because that's how Premiere knows to import them as an actual sequence of images. And you select the first image and make sure you have the checkbox here at the bottom selected for image sequence and hit import. And this will pull in all the images into a sequence that basically it treats as a video clip and you can use that for editing inside of Premiere. Now I need to create a new sequence to do my video editing. So I'm just going to select, um, I can either go to file new or I can right click in my project browser and, and go to new item and new sequence. And I'm just going to use HDV 1080p 30 uh, preset, which is 1080p video at 30 frames per second. And what I want to do is just drag my time lapse clip into that sequence. Um, clip mismatch warning, this just means that my image sequence is not the same dimensions as my video sequence, and that's okay. I'm going to keep existing settings because I actually want my image sequence to be bigger so that I can pan around the sequence inside the video without losing any quality. And, and you know, I can zoom in, I can zoom out um, to, to really get the viewing angle, the perspective that I want. So now if I hit play, you can see that we have that time-lapse clip and we're editing it inside of a video sequence. Now I want to come in here, I actually want to shorten this a little bit, let's make it about 27 seconds. And I want to uh, enhance the colors a little bit. So let me go ahead and select brightness and contrast. We'll drop it right onto the video because here at the end I want to make it a little bit brighter, maybe add a little bit of contrast to, to bring out details Let me put it back up to 90% scale and we'll see this a little bit better. So let's shift it a little bit so we bring the parking lot into focus. Okay, so I've, I've brightened this image so that when it's dark you can see a little bit more details. Let's go ahead and set a keyframe on both brightness and contrast and We'll set a keyframe on the position also because what I want to do is have the image pan over the, the, the duration of playback. So, and I'm going to jump back to the beginning of the time lapse and set another keyframe because brightness, I don't want, to, want it brighter. And contrast, let me dial back the contrast so that when we play it, the brightness, um, the image will actually get brighter as the sun goes down so that we don't lose any detail, and the contrast will also be increased. Now let me jump back to the beginning again, and now I want to add motion. Oops, I want to do it vertically. So I want to add motion to this image over playback. So I, in the beginning, I want it to focus on the sky, and in the end, I want it to focus on the parking lot, because once the sky is dark, there really isn't anything to draw attention but there is motion happening in the parking lot once it gets dark. So I've now just added a keyframe for brightness and contrast and position so you can see that over the course of playback, the position of the video shifts and also the brightness levels shift. Now let's go ahead and I want to add some audio to this. So jump over and I've already got an audio clip just drag and drop that into my project. Let me drag it right onto our sequence timeline. 
And let's say I want this to fade out at the end of the clip. I can just drag my fade effect right onto my audio clip. You can see it's right here. And I, let's say I want to extend the duration of the fade. So th that audio now fades out towards the end. Let's make that a little bit longer of a fade out. Whoops. And the other thing I want to do is actually have the video fade out towards the end. So I'm going to do a dip to black effect. So that's in the effects for Premiere here. I am going to do dip to black. Just going to drop that on the end. We'll extend that a little bit more. So the audio fades out and then the image fades to black. And the other thing that I want to do, let's just add a title on it. And we'll put in the date for this. So just create a new title. We'll drop some text on here. It was January 27th. And let's choose a different font. There, Helvetica New. Oops. Helvetica New Ultralight. Let's go ahead and make that 200 point font. Let's make it even bigger. Let's make it 250. That, that looks good to me. And we'll center it. And I can live with that. So now that I've created this title, all I need to do is drag and drop it right onto the video. But you'll notice it, it just kind of shows up. And let's say I want it to actually fade in. So I can go to my effects. And there's one called Cross Dissolve. I can drag and drop that. And you'll see that just by adding the cross dissolve effect, that text is now going to fade in. Now let me just adjust on the timeline um, the fade in period. So I actually want the, the text to more slowly fade in. And I want it to exist for a little bit longer after the image sequence goes away. So let me just extend a couple seconds. We'll extend audio playback. And we'll now see at the end. We've got the time lapse happening. The time lapse is going to fade out. The text is going to fade in. And now the music is going to start to fade out. Now we've got a complete time lapse sequence. And we can just go to File, Export, Export Media. And we can export our video to whatever format we want. I've already got the YouTube uh, HD 1080p. Where are we? 1080p, 29.97 frames per second. I'll go ahead and export that right now. And I can, once this is done, I can upload it to the web.